Shalom family, and welcome back to the channel. I wanted to share a dream that I recently had about Dr. Charles Stanley, who died on Tuesday, April 18th, tax day, coincidentally. Join me for a brief word of prayer. Father in heaven, please give me the words that you wish for me to speak. Help me to say those things that are pleasing in your sight. Help me, Heavenly Father, to lie down that you might rise up by your Ruach in Yahushua's holy name. Let it be done according to your word. So be it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Saints, the night before last, I had a dream. The night of April 19th, morning of April 20th, I had a dream about Dr. Charles Stanley. Let me preface this by saying that for several years, my family and I attended First Baptist Church of Atlanta, Dr. Charles Stanley's church. Dr. Stanley is somebody who has been a, an influential man in my own life for many years. When I first entered the ministry as a Christian minister, one of the most flattering compliments I ever received and that I cherished for many years was people describing me as sounding, quote unquote, you sound just like Charles Stanley. And that was very encouraging to a young man who wanted to serve the father with all his heart. The father awakened me several years ago, not only to my Israelite heritage, but to his true name of Yahua Elohim Seveyoth. And he called me to start digging deeper in the scriptures. In fact, he only began to show me these things about himself after I went on what I called a Godcation at the time. Today I would call it a Yahcation, where I shut out all external influences and only read the Bible and listened to scripture for a series of a few months. Every free moment I had, I read the scriptures. Every opportunity that I got, I turned off television and watched, or listened rather, to people reading the Bible. But I was determined to read and read and read. I was zealous for the Father. And he began to show me things I had never thought of, never heard of, and was stunned about. So for instance, he showed me through Pastor Stephen Darby that the children of the slave trades, the African-Americans, the children of the slaves in Brazil and in Canada and in the Caribbean islands were actually not merely slaves from Africa, although that is where we were picked up. We were children of the house of Judah. That insight transformed me and the father called me to go deeper. No, it didn't give me a new pride in flesh because many Israelites have known who they were throughout history, including in the biblical periods, and they still died in their sins and were condemned to perdition. But it gave me a new understanding of what my purpose was and why I'm here. But back to Dr. Stanley. I was at his church for many years and admired him, but there were various things that I saw that troubled me. And in fact, I was awakened to my and my people's Israelite identities while attending his church. I continued to attend it for a few more years after discovering that I was an Israelite because I wasn't sure what to do. I found online many ministries that said many interesting things. But the Father didn't call me to formally affiliate myself with any of them. I had to grow in terms of my understanding of what the Hebrews of Scripture, the Israelites of Scripture, were called to be, a light, what we were called to do, be a city on the hill, how we were called to live. We were called to be called by his name. And I had to understand what that meant. Through my wrestling with the Father and my wrestling with Scripture, 
I came to write a book called Called by Thy Name. In that book, I explored this more fully. But ultimately, we left First Baptist Atlanta and launched out into our own ministry where we held our own Sabbath studies. We fellowshiped with others as we could, but we decided not to follow doctrines of men, but to follow the scriptures and just go through the scriptures exegetically, expositionally, line by line, precept upon precept. And we found many things that were neither taught by the people of evangelicalism, the tradition from which I hailed, nor by many of the Hebrew congregations and assemblies scattered throughout the country. And many of the things that I've seen have been encouraging, but many have been concerning. But one of the things that moved me was that despite the fact that much of what he said was true, I saw signs of what I thought were Freemasonry. For instance, his having served as president of the Southern Baptist Convention, which is a denomination filled with Freemasons. The fact that by all indications, Dr. Stanley, despite preaching like an angel at times, was himself a 33rd degree Mason. How do you know? I saw him make hand signs and gestures throughout my time there, which shocked me. All Masonic hand signs. Even more so, his hand-picked successor, Anthony George, did the same thing. And I saw Dr. George one Sunday make a triangle in front of his chest and then quickly flash it away. And he did it so fast. I wonder to this day, years later, if I ever saw it, except I did see it. It's almost as if he were a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, or he were a member of what some call the Illuminati. These men are involved in things they don't tell you and me about. So in my dream, when I went to bed, I wasn't thinking about Dr. Stanley. Didn't expect to dream about him. But in my dream, what I saw was a man who presided over not a global international ministry and a photography studio where he went to various countries. And Dr. Stanley was gone all the time, by the way, as pastor of First Baptist because he went to Indonesia. He went all over the world to every country. And he was shooting pictures. And we all loved it. And we saw the evidence of his pictures in the bulletins. The cover of the bulletin was always some art, some photography that Dr. Stanley had shown. That was cool. But in this dream, I saw men huddled in groups, talking in quiet and in secret and in meetings and lots of meetings. And I saw not only the people of In Touch Ministries, the $155 million a year ministry that Dr. Charles Stanley ran. But I also saw other groups, think tanks, associations, organizations that I can't fully describe, that I didn't always understand. But what I saw in the dream is that Dr. Stanley didn't just preach the gospel and he didn't just share little messenger devices, handheld devices filled with scripture and with Dr. Stanley's sermons. I saw that he was having meetings with governments, that he was having meetings with big business. I saw that Dr. Stanley served as a nexus or a hub in the transfer of various things. Some might ask me what kinds of things. Things like money, between parties, things like guns, things like drugs, money laundering, drug smuggling, gun running. I don't have evidence about what sounds probably like wild allegations. I'm telling you what I saw in my dream. I was meeting with people 
myself in these groups. And at one point they asked me, so do you want this? And the this was to become a famous singer. And my initial reaction was, well, no. I, I mean, can I do that? I mean, how could I? I'm not, for the record, a good singer. It's why you don't hear me singing in my videos. The Father hasn't given me that gift, although I sing to the Father all the time. And he gives me music and he gives me songs. But I don't sing publicly. I'm not in a choir. I'm not marketing myself as an artist. But these people in this meeting in the dream were offering me the opportunity to become a famous musician, a famous singer, if I wanted it. And I hesitated and I said, well, you know, I, how could I do that? No, I don't think so. And they said, okay. And they immediately moved on to begin extending the offer to someone else. And I said, you know, how could that be? I can't really sing. And they replied, it doesn't matter if you can sing or not. We don't call good singers to become world famous artists. We equip them. It's not their singing voice that we need. It's their influence. And they were just going to make me a world famous artist if I wanted it. But I refused because I knew that there was something else. This seems probably unrelated to the dreams about the operation in touch ministries and the operations that I saw of Dr. Stanley. But I don't think it is. I think when you look on the world stage and you see the most influential and famous people in entertainment, in movies, in television, in singing, in music, in athletics, what you're looking at are not necessarily the most talented people in the world. You're looking at people who have opened themselves up to the influence of demons and fallen angels. And many of the most famous pastors and the most famous entertainers and governmental leaders, I believe, are not even human. Many of the pastors are actually warlocks. Many of the ministers are witches. These are people who are demons or even fallen angels in disguise. So let me conclude with one last comment. Over the years, the Father has called me to traverse the entire continental United States for the purpose of praying the Father's will. And much of that will has been judgment. On Sunday, this past week, I went to Houston and I prayed over Lakewood Church, Joel Osteen pastors, and I prayed that the Father's judgment would sweep that church and every similar church that perverts the good news of Yahushua HaMashiach and the gospel of Yahuwah Elohim. I prayed that he would deliver his judgment upon them and upon all like them. And within 48 hours of that prayer, the world heard that Dr. Stanley had died. I believe that the Father is getting ready to meet his judgment out against these churches. Why? Because even though many believe they are preaching the gospel, they are not. They don't tell you who the true Hebrews are, the Israelites are. They're not the people who are congregated into the land of Israel today. They're not the people who went over in the 1940s. The churches do not teach Yahuwah's real name. They keep calling him God, even though that's a generic title and not a name. And he gives us his name in Psalm 68, 4, praise him by his, exalt him by his name, Yah. They don't want to teach that. They don't teach that he is against all forms of idolatry. 
They don't teach that we are called to observe his feasts appointed in Leviticus 23 forever. They don't teach that we should observe Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which recently ended, rather than Easter and the Holy Week, Maundy Thursday, and all that garbage, that those man-made traditions. They don't teach that his law, statutes, and commandments apply forever because they are reflections of his eternal glory and character. He gave his law as a reflection of who he is. He tells us in Lamentations that he changeth not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. If he were to change, then his law could be done away with. They teach us that his law was done away with by the sacrificial death of Yahushua HaMashiach, whom they call Jesus Christ. And that is a lie. That is not anything Yahushua ever teaches. He teaches that he came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. 1 John chapter 3 teaches us that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. But we don't want to do that. We say his commandments are done away with and we're now only governed by love. But love, even as the Apostle Paul taught, is a fulfilling of the commandments. Which commandment of the Ten Commandments are we supposed to do away with? We're not supposed to do away with any of them. It's not okay to lie, steal, covet, take our neighbor's spouse. It's not okay to do any of that. It's not okay to have any other Elohim, any other God before Yahuwah, our Elohim. It's not okay to follow fallen angels in their religious it's religion. It's not okay to follow Mary as the Roman Catholics do, the mother of Jesus, who is really just a rebaptized, disguised Ishtar, Isis, fallen angel. It's not okay to follow Astarte and call her Mary. It's not okay to worship many saints and actually be worshiping fallen angels just as the Egyptians did, just as the Hindus did, just as the Zoroastrians did. It's not okay to follow Baal. It's not okay to do any of the things that the Christian churches and other religions do, and yet they do them anyhow. So my prayer is that you would follow the great king of glory, would not harden your necks like the ancient Israelites of old and like the Christians of today who refuse to put away their idols and who refuse to put away the traditions of men. Follow him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength because there is little time and his judgment is here and he is preparing to destroy those who reject his son. Be blessed, saints. Yahua Elohim Seveoth, be magnified and exalted in your people forever. You called your people as your battle axe and weapons of war. Raise up, Father, a people who knows your name, upon whose foreheads you write your name, who apply their minds to seeking you, their hearts to seeking you, to knowing your ways, and their energy to following you. Protect us against the mark of the beast. And help us to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. In Yahushua's holy name, let it be done according to your word, so be it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.